I'm pleased to be joined now by Iditarod champion Martin Boozer. Now you spoke about focusing on the bottom of the totem pole and developing some of the weakest. Why have you found this to be successful? Well, I drew a lot of parallels between what I do and what happens in real life. You know, and, and like I said, I, I used the Michael Jordan example, you know, the CEOs, the CFOs, the, the, the natural stars, the natural successful people. They make the team with very little coaxing, with very little uh, hand-holding. But no matter how good the team is, there is a relative uh, stagger, you know. And, and I always say the relative weakest, in my team, the relative weakest is one incredible athlete. He's a, he or she is an incredible performer. <clears throat> but from a coach, from a trainer, from a manager's point of view, I still spend more time with that, what I call the relative weakest. And relative, of course, is important. <clears throat> and we have to make decisions based around his or her uh, mobility or ability to travel. Very much like in business, you know, if you have a team member that's, that's not productive, you either develop him or her or you get rid of him. You have a choice to make, but no matter how many people or how many, in my case, dogs you get rid of, so to speak, you always have a relative weakest. So at one point you have to, the Michael Jordan example again, you got to have five players. You can't just blatantly cut without paying attention to the, to the benefit of the whole team. So I, I developed that saying, you only go as fast as your slowest dog, which is, of course, uh, truth in, in any team sport. And as you mentioned, there's so many life lessons that can be learned from your experiences. What do you feel like is the biggest thing that you've learned that you've been able to carry over then into your own life? Running the Iditarod for now 29 times has, has taught me to be what I call in the moment. And of course, dogs are the, are, are the greatest teachers of that, you know, dogs and kids. I call my dogs eternal children, to some degree have taught me how to be in the moment. And it not only applies to children and dogs, it applies to people as well. If I conduct my life and I'm focused on this very interview, that I'm really in the moment right now, it doesn't matter what happens tomorrow, what happened yesterday. If I can, if I can be so in tune with my surroundings and the people I interact with, or even the places I'm going to next, uh, then I think I'm, I'm living right, you know, because if I'm distracted, if I have that favorite Hawaiian island I would like to be, why am I here? I should be here and I should be in the moment. And the dogs, of course, are the, the ultimate teachers of that. So, so I use that as a life lesson and I share that rapidly with people that say, which one is your favorite dog? And I said, the one I'm interacting with at the time is my favorite dog. Very much like a teacher, you can't have favorites. Very much like a parent with multiple children, you, you wouldn't want to show favoritism. So, so being in the now is very important for me. That's great advice. Do you think that's what's made you so successful in this event? Or is there something else that's been a real key to your success? Well, the variables, of course, are huge. How to be successful in, in any endeavor, such as the Iditarod, of course, where you have so many variables. I think, hard, uh, again, what, what people have in common, whether they're communicators of the 911 system or dog mushers, attention to detail, you know, being in the now, hard work, diligence, you know, all those things contribute. And then, of course, sometimes they lead to success. And, and that's, what, that's what makes you tick. If you have been successful a few times, you want more of that. It's the ultimate rush. It's the ultimate reward for having worked so hard and doing the, all that attention to detail, mind over matter, perseverance, and, and being, being able to make adjustments on the, on the go. When, when I sign up for the editor, my primary goal is to win. But I've been in many storms, in many situations where winning is way down the horizon, right now we need to get through that storm. And so you, I call it redirecting your goals to the point where I've had them as far as my outstretched hand because that's as far as I could see. So having the mental ability to switch around and, and restructure your, your approach to the ultimate goal is very important. So I think flexibility of mind is very important as well. From your talk today, What's the one thing that you hope that people will take away from what you had to say? Focus on your team. You know, that's, uh, of course, having a, you, you're always part of a team. You know, the society, family, businesses, you know, you can, you, even, even down to the single cubicle where, where the communicators 
ultimately are a team. If, if you drop a call, somebody else needs to pick it up. Uh, everybody needs to work for the common goal. And in, in this industry, of course, APCO is a, is a superb example of how if you don't pick up the ball that somebody might have dropped, the catastrophes can be, can be tremendous. So everybody needs to work together. And I talked a little bit about job sharing or empowerment, that what you know you should be able to share so that if you go to Alaska and have a nice vacation, somebody can step in your shoes and take over what, what your skill set is. So, so the more we can, we can share our skills, the better off, of course, we are, the more we can delegate. Well, thank you for taking time to chat thank with you. us. Wonderful things that you had to share today. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks. a lot.